I didn't know we can admit all. So meeting one by one. <laughs> Hello and welcome everybody as everybody's joining. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I am a Adding everybody, could you please mute your microphones so we don't have any... Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, well, this is very exciting. Welcome to the Theater of Now. Um, if you are in the Easter Coast, good morning. Central Coast, you're getting ready for you're getting ready for the mid-morning. Here in Miami, it's going to be 11 a.m. In Malta, it is 4.30 p.m. And our friends in India, is 8 p.m. Uh, it's very exciting to to have everybody here as I'm going to continue uh, working as a moderator of this meeting. I will ask everybody who joined to please turn off your microphones because the sounds can affect the, uh, affect the streaming. Uh, one more thing, uh, the structure is going to be very simple. Uh, I have asked our speakers to present themselves in uh, one or two minutes and then they were going to have a presentation around 10 to 15 minutes. After we finish the fourth uh, person, um, uh, the fourth person, uh, our fourth speaker, what we're going to do is we're going to open a question and answer. So if you guys have any questions, answers about any of the presentations, I know that by the end of uh, the last speaker, we're going to be able to have that time. It's mostly informal. Uh, the speakers are colleagues, are friend of mine, artists uh, who are working uh, currently in in the different different uh, elements of theater and performing arts, and um, and that's it, I think. And there we go. Um, thank you very much, and let's start with Gosha. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm very honored to be part of that meeting. Um, just shortly um, saying uh, I am a stage director. Um, I graduated a theater academy in Poland. Um, and my specialization is puppet theater. Um, mostly I'm doing performances uh, for uh, ver the very small audience, uh, kids, uh, mostly puppet uh, theater, but also uh, in a drama um, way, um, also for adults uh, and very much connected with uh, music, mostly live music and with um, um, contemporary uh, music, like a kind of operas um, connected with this Nova um, ele Electronica, uh, Nova Electronic uh, music, uh, contemporary music. Um, um, the thing actually, um, what I would like to share with you, maybe just a few thoughts uh, that I have uh, during that pandemia times, is that uh, maybe you will agree with me uh, that we, uh, of course, I will talk about my experience. Uh, me as a 
theater performative person. I really like and need a very uh, personal meeting with people, working with them uh, live in a one place, one room, trying things out, exchanging ideas, um, trying, um, uh, of course, like using our uh, bodies, using the moment, because like theater is about here and now. So, um, uh, of course, uh, preparing performances and working with people often from different countries or being currently somewhere was also possible with the, in that technical moment of preparation. For example, um, conversation with a stage designer or composer, that what we were always doing via Skype, WhatsApp, we didn't have to meet, yeah? But of course the rehearsal time, it's this magic moment when you are here and now with actors, with all collaborators, uh, people responsible uh, for, uh, for the performance and to prepare something that we will show live to the audience. And this pandem uh, pandemia time like showed me that uh, how much, uh, even much more important uh, it is, this, uh, this not distance, this very close, very intimate process of uh, rehearsing, uh, this face-to-face -face, uh, moment. And I need to frankly say, in that moment when I saw what is happening with closed theaters that they couldn't show um, and they ways of looking, okay, what we can do, how we can exist online, um, preparing some speeches and um, actors showing some small things online, um, even doing performances online, showing uh, the records of performances, everything great, Yes, but for example, for me, it was not the media, media uh, I uh, would like to use. Uh, I was at some point, I was really enough with computer. The only thing I wanted to do is like to shut this off, <laughs> have a very key with calm music, meeting people with whom I live in. So I see them face to face and and like really have this time for myself for very inner work, like meditation, yoga, everything that I could do, like really working with with myself and with here and now. And um, and uh, yeah, that also showed me that really um, looking for the um, um, uh, trying to do something like theater in internet and bombarding everyone, I have to exist now online internet was like really overwhelming at some point and I, I, I couldn't watch any performances. I even couldn't watch a movie. Uh, I, I really, I really was sitting in the computer just maybe for very, very, very writing mails, things that I really had to do. So now I'm in the moment that I really need that very intimate, personal work with actors uh, in a one room, uh, this research. And this actually showed me that now I'm even more uh, ready to uh, do some more workshops, researches um, in, in the way of poor theater as Grotowski did. So like, um, as, as I mentioned before, I, uh, I do a lot of uh, puppet theater. So very ex uh, important uh, thing and it's all that technology, all that puppets, um, the set the design, uh, everything um th this is also the way which uh was the main thing how i built the performance uh what what would be relation with actor how actor will create the character because he's using this or that technology and after all of that i feel like i want to have an empty stage i just want to have a real actor uh, who can be so much connected with 
himself and with like um, the common consciousness that can show me uh, my fears, my worries, uh, share some emotions in a very different um, than a casual, usual, uh, normal reality life. Of course, like this aesthetic that I really like in theater, that, that as you see, it's art, but it's performing in art. It's happening now, and you are participating in completely, completely different way. You feel that energy as, as something flowing and speaking with you between the lines, yeah, between the words. Um, so um, what is maybe not funny because I was doing many, many things, many different uh, things uh, in my life. I mean, from the performing arts and, and I will still keep on going with uh, puppet theater, with opera wise things, with musical wise things. But now after uh, that lockdown, I feel I wanna really uh, build a small community, like a group of people that they feel they are safe uh, they can uh, connect with their inner emotions, also with that collective in emotions. And when they feel safe uh, um, together, they can share it and express in another way. Like we can exchange just a creativity and touch uh, the audience. And now even I feel, and I recall my experiences from the moments when I was doing um, monodramas, uh, one actor performances. And then uh, usually you do it for a very small audience, 50 till maximum 100, 150 uh, people on the uh, audience. So uh, there the actor could really see the faces of people, uh, uh, contact uh, with some of them. Uh, it was already in, in the script we, we were working on this, like, yes, but they really have to look into the eyes of some people, yeah? Uh, and, and the performance each time was a bit different because the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the audience was different. So now I feel to do this kind of performances when you have a small audience that everyone feel kind of really participating that it's um, that this moment is very magic, very special, very important for, for uh, each person that we are here and now together and we are trying to transform somehow our emotions and to look from another perspective uh, with uh, distance to our lives, to, to things which are happening. Um, yeah, and like shortly say, <laughs> um, because I'm not sure, I know I have around 10 minutes, I'm not sure how much still I have. <laughs> You still have a couple of minutes, don't worry. You have ah, okay. two minutes to finish. Oh, you see, so good. Uh, so, um, so yeah, actually to finish in my speech, maybe opening a field also for others to, to share um, if they feel kind of uh, similar or, um, or just like um, the, the last... Um, thing from me is um, that that was really, um, this is like very interesting or, or, uh, moment in my artistic professional life because I see, okay, um, now it's a good moment to try something, uh, something different. So I don't want to say really new, but like different and check how it's working now, if it would be more intensive and if it's true what I feel that people need it now. I really have like this from society, this, this feeling that because you can be so um, um, uh, unknown, I mean, in internet, uh, you you really need to feel con in the connection with other people, with a small community, small group, and I really think it's a basic um, 
feel a basic um, experience that that each of us need and i think that theater now performing arts it's it's like the best tool the best way to meet in this uh, this way and really um achieve something something better and something that we all need thank you <laughs> Thank you very much, Gosha. It is uh, one of the reasons that this meeting is to be able to understand the connection. And for all the participants who are listening right now, the question that uh, we use with the speakers that we are talking about is how is our personal experience as artists in, in this moment? And to find like a Polish theater director that works uh, in Italy and German, Germany at the same time has the same feelings of claustrophobic that I feel here being at Colombia and in Miami, it is a, a reaffirmation for me that um, we are connected. It doesn't matter the geographical connection. So thank you so much. And uh, let's give the, the floor for Charlie. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, for, for gathering all of us together. Um, Exactly that. I, I just experienced what you're talking about, listening to Gosha uh, talk about her experience and feeling that connection and feeling like, okay, I, somebody else is feeling these same things. I've been uh, amazed during the quarantine at the, the massive amounts of theater one can consume on the internet if you wanted to. And I just can't do it. So I know uh, I'm a, a theater professor at Gonzaga University and I, uh, I'm the producing artistic director at Square Top Theater. So I'm speaking as a, as a theater professor. So I have students and I'm working with them last spring uh, like this, uh, which was a completely new experience, all the while trying to plan some new work with them and then with my theater company. And it's a really... Um, strangely uh, isolating experience to be in connection with people uh, just on the internet. When, like you're saying, Gosha, you're used to having a group of artists in the same space. And it's amazing how much our, our bodies do the communicating. And when it's just the image and just the voice, uh, we miss so much and it can be exhausting. And so, when I'm teaching, I'm throwing all of these links to my students saying, here, watch this show. Look, you can see uh, Brecht's theater, right? Go see, you can travel to Berlin. You can see it on your screen. You can go there now. You can see all of this work. And my dirty secret was I just couldn't do it myself. I just couldn't tune in for, uh, for those sort of things because what I missed was that shared contract that the performers and the audience have with one another, that we are signing on as audience members. When we go into the theater, we sign on for two hours of wherever those performers want to take, want to take us, right? And when we're watching something online, it, it, it sort of feels like that contract isn't there. We can pause it. We can run to the kitchen to grab something else. We, we, there's that disconnect that is more than just spatial. It's also about that, that um, contract somehow is broken. We get the story or we get the uh, emotion on the screen, but we don't have that same sort of reflection. And so this time has been interesting. For me, it's a, it's a time of preparation. Um, and of course, we don't know how long the, this time of preparation will go. Uh, at my university, we are preparing right now to go back to in-person instruction in the fall. Uh, and it looks like that's going to happen, but we'll be in a hybrid setting. So I'll be working with uh, directors this fall uh, in an advanced directing class and trying to get them to think about how they're preparing themselves. Uh, in this new setting. My colleagues will be teaching acting and dance and design in a hybrid setting, trying to think about this. And one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about, especially when Jesus invited me, um, you know, what's the, what are the main things that, that I'm feeling right now? And 
I think what I'm I, what I'm feeling mostly is that we can't wait. We can't, you know, theater has never been made in ideal situations. I mean, of course, there are some people who create in, in ideal situations, but mainly theater is made in whatever context, with whatever conditions the performers find or the audience finds. And this is what we have now. This is where we, we find ourselves. So digital theater, I'm, I'm interested by it. Um, but I'm also aware of its limitations. So I applaud some of my um, friends that I've seen who've been experimenting with, with digital theater. That hasn't seemed um, overly uh, inspiring to me because I'm like Gosha, I really want people in a room together. Um, and I read a, an interesting article in the New York Times. The headline was, digital theater isn't theater. It's how we mourn the lack of theater right now, which I think is, is really well said. That's that's exactly what I feel. Great, we can try these things, and there's been some some um, interesting forays in digital theater, but it doesn't feel like theater. The best um, the best I've seen is is Complicité's rebroadcast of the Encounter. I don't know if any anybody has seen that. That seemed to transcend the digital space. It's the one piece of theater I took in um, during this whole time. Uh, and it's because he immerses you, Simon McBurney Im immerses you within a soundscape. You're in headphones uh, watching him perform a monodrama and you can, it's a, it's a mystery. It's a, it was a beautiful piece. That's the only piece that I think verges on that contract. Um, and so what am I feeling now? I'm feeling that um, the indeterminate qualities that we are right, we have right now are going to be really important for theater uh, and learning how to embrace those things we can't control. That's part of theater anyway, right? Uh, we go to see theater because you can't fake it. There's an actor on stage, he's standing on a giant ball uh, or he's crawling up a wall he may fall at any moment that's part of what we want to see if you know secretly we want to see what happens if if something messes up right there's a, there's this indeterminate quality of, of theater and that's what we can't have necessarily right now in the digital space because everything is is controllable and so what I'm looking forward to is figuring out how to harness the indeterminate qualities the, the random, uncontrollable aspects of what we're experiencing right now and putting that into theater. Um, I know for myself where I feel like my work works best, it's when it's just teetering on uh, not being able to control it. Or more, there's an element of the work that just cannot be controlled. And so um, I, I set a, a production of Waiting for Godot up against a train track uh, in downtown Spokane. And so this train 30 feet behind the stage uh, stopped the performance because it was so loud. And the actors then had to improvise with the train conductor as he's coming by and they're blowing their whistle. They think it's Godot, right? You know, it, it becomes part of it, but we had no idea when the train would come by. And so there was this inherent tension. Uh, it, it could not work. Trains could not come by at all. There could be too many of them. And something about that charges a performance when you can't control it. And I feel like we're all in a state right now where we're not in control in a really beautiful way. And so I think I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like wanting to figure out ways to put more indeterminate qualities into my work and my work with students and then encouraging them as well to um, take on tasks, take on performance um, ideas and concepts that can't possibly be fully manipulated. Um, I'm curious about, about that. The other thing right now is this idea that I think theater brings out is a sense that we are all in this together. Um, this, an idea of, of like mutual causality. We are all dependent upon each other. Uh, the virus is teaching us this. We can't 
extract ourselves from the rest of humanity. We cause other people's cause. We are mutually caused. Um, and so as a theater um, professor, I'm really excited about at some point, even if it's in masks and face shields, getting in with, with actors again and, and diving into actor training in a way that actors are asked to be much more in tune with one another. Um, I learned a, a, a style of, of, I'm just sort of picking and grabbing from all of these other um, theater practitioners that I've been able to learn from. And a lot of the actor training I've, I've been able to cobble together relies on this mutual causality, these actors tuning themselves to each other so that the collaboration is happening in time with one another. Um, and I think this point in time gives us a lot to play with. Um, we can no longer function as if we are independent actors. We're all in this together. And I think using theater uh, as a way to, or using actor training as a way to get students um, working and creating and being completely interdependent as collaborators um, feels really exciting. And it also feels sort of paratheatrically like a way to create a better society um, because actors are trained to de depend on one another. Um, I think that will make society better. <laughs> I, just, I just hope it, I hope it will. Um, and then I think the last thing that I'm that I'm curious about, um, I have a, a friend of mine. One of my my main collaborators is a writer in Norway, and thankfully for years now we've been able to collaborate like this, um, preparing to do work together. Um, he's been writing up a storm. This guy Damon Falk. He's been writing like crazy uh, in quarantine. Uh, and I realized as a writer, he doesn't have to wait. He can create now. As a director, I have to prepare. And so I'm feeling more and more like I'm moving into a, a period of deep practice and preparation. And so my colleagues and I at Gonzaga University are, are we've canceled our performances for the fall. We have no per, um, public performances planned. Um, that was a hard decision to make. Um, but we're moving our, our students into a season of really diving into preparation and practice and theory and history and a clarification of why do they create? What is it that they want to make? Um, so that when we can work together, the technique is there. Um, if, if technique is the proof of seriousness, I want my students to have a to have a greater sense of technique. And now seems the time to slow down, uh, like Gosha's saying, work in a poor theater manner. Sometimes it can be very easy to think, I'll just put more technology at it um, and that will make the work better. And I'm feeling more like, let's dive into a season of deep practice so that when we can come out of that, we'll have more technique to draw on. So it's something that, that my colleagues and I at Gonzaga are going to be doing this fall and into the spring of really diving into much more rigor of theory and history uh, and helping the students to clarify their vision as we clarify our own visions um, for what we wanna make. This seems like a nice and opportune time to pause and to think deeply about where do we wanna take it? Given the new conditions, instead of, instead of waiting for an opportune time, being sensitive to what is going on now, um, that we can use theater as a process of thinking um, to respond to our time and our place and our communities. Um, that's what I'm hoping, at least for this time. Thank you very much, Charlie. It is wonderful and you have touched very important um, moments. I always admire your capacity to go into the unknown and relentless, just be uncomfortable with it, but keep walking through it and to find the new ways. I think that things that you I, resonate with me, the 
the feeling of lack of control before we have a space where we control everybody's quiet we close the door and we have that we don't have that sense of control anymore but we have a sense of community and connection in some way so thank you thank you let's go now with suprio in india kolkata I see Supriyo still. Okay, now is uh, okay? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, thank you again, Jesus. And thank you all the participants who are here. Uh, and thank you this corona infection or virus, whatever is pandemic, that we are more comfortable in internet and we are more now communicating with different ideas and that is very important uh, to know about more the situations as a theater activist uh, I think someone, if this is possible to move, yeah, thank you. Uh, here, uh, I just want to share something about my experience during this pandemic, that how I received this situation in my own theater practice. Because uh, let me say something about myself, so um, I think then I can share my thought, what I am now thinking. That for the last 25 years, uh, I am working with a group, it's called Vibhavan. It's an experimental group. We are normally do intimate space theatre in Kolkata, in West Bengal, India. So in our group, uh, it sounds like experimental theatre company, but we have no company. I mean, our performers are come and we work together. We didn't pay them. And uh, this scenario is for the last 25 years. They come and they join with us and they enjoy with our work. And maybe they do some services or the other works. And they give time to our theatre. And we are doing theatre in this way for the last two decades, I can say. So in that scenario, theater is not their bread and butter. So why they do theater? And now how they feel theater? Because theater is not in our group. Not like this, that, OK, if I don't go to the practice or the rehearsal, then I not get any money. So my, it's not like this way. But there is something that which I want to share that theater is not about only a performance, not about only in this room, or not about for me in the, this kind of uh, conversation. It's beyond. Because if Jesus remember that once when we are in the Zinka, that is very important lesson for me that we are moving in a forest and we don't know about the forest, that what the character of the forest is. And in a few minutes, 30 minutes, it's dark. And we don't know each other so closely, but we are in a theater situation. We are going for a workshops. And the, there is only thing exists, theater, nothing. For me, theater is this, that in that dark time, it gives that confidence that, OK, this time we will recover and we can go into our work. So first, think positive. And first of all, it is needed because sometimes this silence, this space 
is needed for us because we are running, 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 and running. Uh, and uh, we don't think about ourselves. Maybe in workshop we do meditations half an hour, two hours. But when you are in this situation where there is no option, you go to outside. If there is another room and your room, then you have to go to your memory and think that, okay, this is your action is maybe you hurt someone. Maybe there is something in positive you don't understand that way. So as a human being, because for me it's very important, listen, as Grotowski, I quote Grotowski now, that it's very important for our work also. Uh, the line is like this. The, the, it is not important, the theater of now, but did we exist or did we needed that theater in our own And it is very important. So when I think about this discussion, the theater of now, the so theater of now for me is to see the unknown. Like now in Zoom, I don't know everyone, but I know someone whom I send the link and they join us from India and from also USA, one of our friends now she joined. So this relationship is very important for me to theater. Uh, maybe mm, we now understand these communications in this dark time that we exist, maybe very few but we exist. And uh, about the performance and about the actor practice or as a theater practitioner, I think it comes when we go into the work, uh, maybe after one month or two months, because in India the situation is not now so much normal. Maybe it takes time, more two months, to performance. Uh, this thing. So we don't know how it takes shapes. Uh, but the thing is takes shapes in myself inside that maybe what I was two months before after this maybe I am a little change. So this I think changing is very important for me this pandemic. Uh, listen yes there are a lot of difficulties, a lot of things that, okay, an actor needs to be go to the performance and to meet new people. But before you meet, before you meet new people, meet yourself as a new one. And that is very important because it's not about only express some dialogues or something, but try to make a dialogue with yourself that, okay, you are ready to go with your truth to oneself who are looking and the trust because now this is very important yesterday I am talking with some of my friends and uh, it's very I think we are know each other but this corona infection is if, if someone of our friend got this corona infection and we are like, oh, you are corona positive. Like he or she is like a, from different part of this world. We theater people, we are using this word. And uh, we know that this will be required with medicines. Maybe there are deaths. And this is very pathetic that if 
that person is like this, dying. The whole body who is going in another part and we are like to decide this. So where this theater exists now? With the death or my presence of this situation? Okay, I am safe. So I don't know. So <laughs> uh, the theater of now for me is my situation and my Uh, I am very, what I say, I don't know, Jesus, but I think we overcome this trust and this, this is very first important uh, to um, go in the space and theater for me to now to rebuild the trust within yourself that as a theater practitioner, you have that courage to share that courage to your friends, your spectators, um, your audience, that okay, this is life. And maybe you got infected by Corona, but that doesn't mean that we are not different. Yes, this is a disease and okay, you can take medicine and all those things. So that mental courage, now this is required for the theater practitioner. Thank you. Thank you, Supriya. Thank you for, for your words and also thank you for the memory of us lost in the dark in the forest of Poland. I remember trying to get back and I was very nervous about it and you had a smile all the time and you are happy with the sense of getting lost and this is something that I experienced also in India, working in India and, and it's the duality of doing theater in life and death. Like life, like death is part of life, it's not something different. Death is just a state of life, and being lost is a state of the search. So, thank you for that. Let's go back to Roberto. And everybody, uh, please remember, uh, Roberto is going to do his presentation right after that. Uh, we're going to open to questions and answers, anything that you guys want to talk, discuss, comment with any of the speakers, or anything that you want to say. Um, so, Roberto, is, this is your moment. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, uh, for inviting me to share some thoughts about and around performance now. Um, it's uh, wonderful to listen to my friends and uh, fellow artists because many of the themes that they have brought about are the same themes that I encounter in um, uh, various conversations with the artists from all over the world. For instance, Goetia's uh, Common Consciousness, Charles uh, Theodore is made in whatever context, and the, this idea of going back to the to the to training, and, and also Suprio uh, Theodore as building confidence for life and this dialogue with uh, oneself uh, are all themes that I found in uh, my way of coping with uh, the experience of COVID nineteen. So what I did, um, I started conversations uh, with uh, artists. Uh, from uh, all over the world and I started in March 2020 and I am still doing this now and these conversations are part of the performing human rights project where a team of seven three professors and four students from Trinity University in San Antonio are investigating how government um, government is responding to times of crisis and how the responses of the government are impacting vulnerable populations across the world, including, uh, but not limited to migrants, refugees, and also how various artists, uh, artistic expressions reflect this, uh, this moment. Um, so I think that um, artists are among vulner the vulnerable populations. So I start contacting the, uh, the ones that I know. That's how I got back in contact with Jesus and asking them what they were doing. So I, I collected about, uh, about uh, 43 hours of uh, conversations in, uh, in, uh, uh, with the 34 uh, artists, and they are all on YouTube and Facebook and they're performing human rights, just if you wanna check them out. So from talking to them, uh, I found some, uh, some teams uh, and that I would like to share with you today. So I, I am grateful for the opportunity. One is really 
the way of life of the artist. The second, way is more, the second one is more philosophical and has to do with the, the objective of performance now. And the third part is really a little bit more pragmatic. So when I, I start talking to, the, to my uh, friends and artists, um, I asked them how they were doing. And they all told me that they, they lost the revenue. Uh, they lost all their gigs. And that's how they were doing. Uh, so coping with this. And then I asked them what they were doing. And most of them, I would say 99% of them answered, I am training. I am home practicing my voice or doing physical training or writing performance, writing a song, a musical, painting, or I am acquiring new techniques. In, in other words, they were all creating and they were all going, taking that moment of pause that Char Charlie was talking about to really re-engage with the, some aspect of their practice. So I, I was starting to look at artists like, oh, wow, we are all engaged with this moment. It's not true what I read in the newspapers that theater is, is dead, performance is dead. Now that we cannot do this uh, with an audience, we are all doomed. Well, it's not true. That was not what was happening. And what, one thing that I discovered talking with the, the artists is not only their art, that is contributing to society, but is also their way of living. And, the, what, and how they have developed or went through life as they were making art. Because artists are incredible entrepreneurs, at times they do not know that. So we know, we all have witnessed that during this time of crisis, People are painting, playing instruments, cooking, writing, chanting, dancing, and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so art in a way has served as well, but also it seemed to me that the artists are the best equipped to survive this crisis. And they can be the model for others to follow in order to emerge stronger from these times of challenge. So, we are all artists here, and we know that we create and live in a constant state of crisis. We are always in crisis. Whatever is a, a, a creative crisis or a personal uh, crisis. This, this state of a perennial crisis requires the artist to become an ex excellent problem solver. Not only directors are problem solvers, but all the artists are always trying to solve problems. It's part of the, their making life. Artists learn early in their careers to look at the problem from different angles and also those angles that are not there yet. They are innovative by nature and, uh, and we as artists always work with limited resources and, and always make the best out of it. And that teaches the artists to budget and plan intelligently their funds, their energies, enforcing this creative process and creative priorities. You know, really the idea of creating theater with just the actors that Grisha was talking also about. So we never know where the next paycheck comes from, but it always arrives. So we are survivors, artists are survivors. And as I said before, we are the best equipped to, to be a model for others in times of crisis. So my question becomes, and I gave it to the artists, why are we the artists not at the table when it comes to make policy decisions? Why we are not called to contribute with our rich life experience and expertise to find solutions in these times of crisis? So this is the question that we need to ask not only our politicians, but to ourselves. Because at times we are too timid. And at times we don't take the opportunity to let people know, and those that make decisions, that we deserve that space, that seat at the table to help solve crisis. Because when we are at the table, we then 
hopefully will stay there and contribute when it's time to rebuild the communities and that we, we and which we need and so that we contribute also to policy decisions in terms of uh, funding for the arts. So the other thing, the other um, theme that I discovered in talking with my uh, artists, friends, and uh, is that of, of course COVID-19 is, manifest, is manifesting the failure of a system, that system based on neoliberalism doctrine, really based on capitalism, based on money. Uh, I am in Texas, uh, in America, so it's very important the geographical position where I am. And uh, here is about all about the economy. So it is all about the money. And, uh, and we are still struggling with this, with this uh, reality. Uh, and uh, COVID-19 has started to break the system down. And, it, and, and in talking with, the, with my friends, we discovered that COVID is doing a good job in uh, destroying these uh, parts of this faulty system. And the artist has to become an ally of uh, COVID-19 and finish up to destroy what it needs to be destroyed. Um, they can, the artists can do so by recording what is happening in the present moment, um, by making visible what needs to be broken down completely in the system, and as the artists do so, create and turn this destruction into a memory for future reference so that we don't forget. We are very good at doing that. And, and I would argue that this is already happening in America right now. It is happening with the protests that are often, uh, that are working toward destroying a part of the faulty system that creates um, um, a lack of equality. And uh, all these protests can be read also, as, are also performed, or can be read as performative means with their chanting, with marching, speeches, dances, reenactment. So the artists are always contributing to this really tearing down this part of the system that is, uh, is not working. Because one thing that for sure for all the artists I talked with is that we don't want to go back to where, where it was before. We don't want to do, go there. And we need to engage in this. So I feel that once, this, uh, once we have contributed to the destruction of part of the system that has failed us, we need to rebuild it. So yet, I'm not sure how to do that. But on, from my point of view, and I can only speak for myself, it is my responsibility as an older artist that has uh, also some privilege, is uh, my responsibility to share my knowledge, my privilege, my resources with the young generation of artists. And, um, and I think that just this act of sharing our resources for the ones that have a career and has contacts, connections, is a promising way to recreate, reconstruct, rebuild, because that's what we are good at. We can create uh, a, new, a new system. And of course, this point needs a lot more conversations, but not only a lot more conversations, but also a lot more of action. So for my last point, um, is this, I, I think that we are going to see work performance in the future, also in the present, that is expressed in symbolic forms, more than uh, um, in a realistic way. So not only art that documents reality, but art that comes from the internal life of the artists, that uh, common consciousness that Grisha was talking about. 
Through the conversation, most of the artists spoke of dreams and fantasies and images that often had some mythical reflection. They were telling me that the crisis of uh, their reality um, that they were witnessing was accompanied by an emotional and, and psychological turmoil, which is exactly what was happening to me. Um, and that turmoil was material for creation. So I thought that was just fantastic. And I went directly to um, two authors that I, I ad admire and I studied very much. One is Carl Jung. And I went back to his red book because in that book, there is uh, his experience with the archetypes of the collective unconscious, the common consciousness that um, probably Krisha was talking about. And then I went to Joseph Campbell, of course, an old hero of mine, with this hero of, uh, with a thousand faces, because in this book, he frames the archetypes uh, of the, uh, into mythological dimension, into story, story, uh, storytelling, and uh, really the artistic dimension. So just, I'm sure that you all know, but the archetypes of the collective unconscious, according to Carl Jung, are those experiences and information expressed in symbolic forms that humanity in thousands of years has collected and that are imprinted into our genetic code. They are information that we all share. I am like each one of you because like you, I share in my DNA the same information that is expressed in symbolic forms. So my question to finish is this, is reality, if reality, as it has been so far, and as it has been in America, because I can speak about America, has divided us in different places, in different um, um, stands, Maybe we should do, and we, have, we should have this di dialogue with ourselves that the superior was talking about, going inside ourselves and explore the richness of the common knowledge that we all share. And out of that, create art that is obviously more symbolical. And that is an art that will probably, because we are all the same, we we'll speak the same language, the symbolic language that will bring us together. Because one thing that we obviously need to do in this moment is not to speak to the choir, but to speak also to the other person that sees things differently from us. And although I may not reach the other person because we, are, we have different political ideas, I probably can reach that person if we go more into that in inner level of shared knowledge that we ha all have and we have all um, uh, we are all familiar with. And the last thought to conclude, I wonder what this um, humanity, so Jesus talked about pandemic as a collective experience. I wonder what kind of a, a information we as a universe, as a world that is experiencing the same event are putting in our DNA and how that will uh, surface in the future, in the near future. Thanks. Well, thank you, Roberto. That's uh, powerful, inspiring, and provoking. Uh, always talking to you, you provoke in me uh, several, several, several things, and, and emotional and spiritual. So thank you so much. I, I believe and I am in agreement absolutely regarding uh, the collective consciousness, the moments that we're living, the connections that is needed. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so everybody, at this point, we will open to uh, questions or comments or answers or whatever you want to say. We're going to have a few minutes and you're going to address directly one of the speakers or you want to say something, please feel free. Um, I have uh, a question. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, what uh, I feel in each of uh, the speech 
according to Stanislavski, that he wrote a text about ethic. And after theater of laboratorium was following some ethic, I feel that we have like creative person, human beings that are researching the creative, some responsibility to create relationship now with our training, with our technique. And so my question is, which direction, which ethics to follow? Um, our art, where is the ethics? Our society needs some ethic. Where, what is the fundamental emotions or value to looking for? And maybe this is a concrete proposal to do some kind of um, mission, vision, and people and theater and company can say, okay, I agree about this value, this mission, and I want to try. For instance, like was in the cinema, Las Von Trier 95, that uh, he wrote some uh, uh, kind of manifest about this. So maybe the um, creative can be this activism. So what, what can be this ethics in our work, in our research? I think Mark address everybody. I think he addressed a specific person. So whoever feels want to answer. I can I can I can say something about that. Um, when we we I feel uh, that when we get into the field of ethics and moral issues, we are in uh, very dangerous territories uh, because often the um, ethic, ethical discourse and the moral discourse is uh, politicized and uh, is not a discourse that tends us to create a common ground, but uh, it is always a tool to empower a, cer a certain type of, a certain group of people. So <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, and um, I would say that it should be tackled very carefully. And it might not be our first priority in this moment. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. I think speaking from the United States where, it, Roberto, I think you, you really, you, you spoke it really clearly what some of the problems are, especially in the United States for artists is that anymore it seems, and I say this with a little bit of trepidation, but I think any more art in the United States is either commodity or activist. And I think either end of that is deeply problematic because as Roberto says, it's not our goal to just speak to the choir, to speak to only people who agree with us. And so I was really moved to hear Roberto talk about this move towards more mythical or symbolic forms. This is also something I've been thinking about. It's funny you mentioned Jung. I've also gone back to Jung um, because I feel like now we are experiencing something collective that will definitely, if in fact, uh, affect um, this collective consciousness. And so I'm moved to think about mythical forms and work that transcends commodity and transcends activism to try to speak something more unifying, um, something that can reach a broad open audience uh, and that is made in a way that is ethical. So as far as ethics, we can put our, our sense of shared um, way of working, our, our communal collaborations, that itself speaks to ethics. Um, and in a capitalist system, this is not a system that is um, encouraging of collaboration, right? And so if we make with a sense of this mutual causality, um, that in itself speaks to a better sense of ethics. 
um, but it also moves away from things that are overtly commodified, which is um, something I hope we don't have to return to. Of course, we will. Um, but that's something I'm, I, I'm excited to leave behind, um, a theater that is only built towards commodity. And that's especially problematic in the United States. Uh, and also something that isn't just uh, activistic. It's something that is maybe more um, like what Roberto's talking about. Jesus, can I yeah. say something? Oh, yeah, okay. of course, of course, of course. Uh, thank you, Marco. Marco, can you put on your video so I can see your face? Uh, Marco, uh, thank you for your um, quest, I can say, or the search. I think in this way, this is not a question. It, we are all looking in this way. Uh, so what is the ethics? Uh, uh, for me, I think that this is very dependent because in, it in Italy or in USA or in India or in Poland and every part of the world, the same word in the different meaning. Maybe for me, the theater has a different meaning. Maybe Roberto is talking about some different meaning. Maybe Charlie's, maybe Jesus also looking in a different meaning, but the word and the Gosia and our friends who are here attending this uh, uh, conference or meeting in a different meeting. And the meaning is for me, there is no answer. Because in this situation, as I, when I say something, it's now I don't know tomorrow. And there are uh, this situation. After the end of this meeting, there are another situation. So it's not so easy that what is the ethics or what kind of things uh, we take and we start our work. Because my whole practice of 50, my for 25 years of practice and my age is like 25 plus. So 50 years of my living experience is now talking about theater that in my neighbor is now affected in corona infection. And I am a human being and uh, now I what is my role as a neighbor? I go with him in the nursing home or in the hospital, or I just be there. Okay, no, if I go there, then the infection will be attack me. This is the thing now. This there is for me. I don't know for everyone, but now, now the situation is like this. I don't talk about any political or any things now in this way, because this is the another perspective we are talking. But the thing is that it's now as a human being, I am detached with my, my own humanity. Why I do theater? First, the question is for me, then the theater of now. And if the question is for me that why I do theater, then what is theater for me? It's not only a commodity or whatever, but the question is very inside now, what uh, my friend said before, that there is now we realize that we are no rich people, we are no poor people the infection or the corona or the COVID is coming all together. So now the situation we are thinking that how we survive as a human being. And I think Jesus, what we are our festival, what is not a festival, maybe we are meeting towards a better world. I don't know when you join, we, you meet Baul musicians. And they are now living with a very difficult situations because they are living with their own way and now there are nothing. 
but they are living is they are from their living they experience and they sing or they create their song so now they are talking about in a different way and they are more i say that the situation so uh, so this is for me that now is this how the baul is now talking about the love song or how the baul is singing about the love for the world the crisis is not outside or not the ethics or not the process not the things now i think in the morning in usa or in the night in india why we are connecting each other in this time crisis is there so uh, i with respect of stanislavski with respect of rotovski with respect of all the masters who are in theater but now this situation is i think too like i said before that courage because everyone we are in fear that okay what next it's is i think for me is this is the thing i want to share thank you supriya anybody else has another question that would like to address to the speakers um may i say something yes absolutely please go ahead first of all thank you it was it's very good to be here and uh, i'm francesca and i'm from rome and first of all i'm a singer and also i'm an actress and uh, yes this covid is a uh, very bad uh, here in, in in italy in rome the situation is uh, completely you know flat <laughs> nothing <laughs> and uh, i want to thanks uh, so much roberto because we are friends uh, you know i don't want to say how many years um, but i want to to thanks him um, because uh, um, we he really uh, how do you say is it possible to say in english extrapolate extrapolate he, Yeah, okay, uh, a lot of good things from me and um, I've written, he inspired me and we, co 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 we, have, um, we are cooperating uh, at a, a monodrama and uh, I've written my first monodrama thanks to him because he told me, yes, what do you want to do? What do you want, uh, what do we want to do? And he's in San Antonio, I'm in Rome. And now we are working at this job and I'm at, at this work and I'm very, very glad. And I, I want to say that, yes, it's possible to, um, how do you say? It's possible to take the moments, the bad moments. This is now, it's a, uh, something very, it's a historical moment for all the world you know all over the world it's incredible it's completely everything is different and it will be different because the the the, the our future you know future doesn't exist but anyway we always imagine a future or something like that in our lives and but our future uh, for my um, experience my future i was a uh, thinking, oh, yes, uh, my future will be blah, 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 blah. No, <laughs> nothing at all. So thanks to Roberto, because he told me, uh, why don't we work together? And now I'm working at this monodrama and, uh, and my life is changing because uh, I discovered that, that I was able to do something else, always in the art, you know, because, of, and uh, yes, we can, um, Unified, we can be um, all together, uh, work, and try to to take this moment just to um, I, I don't know <laughs> in English now because you know usually I don't speak in English so much so I don't remember words <laughs> but anyway uh, how to 
jump after this war, okay? And build something else, something new. So thank you, just this, nothing else. It's only my experience, my Thanks to Roberto and thanks to you, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, pardon, Jesus. And uh, <laughs> okay, now I shut up. <laughs> Uh, thank, thanks to you, Francesca. Honestly, like oh. it's, it, we don't, it, we, it's the human connection that, that I'm, I'm looking for. And, and to get to meet you and for you to share your energy, your voice, your experiences, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So thank you. Thanks to you. We have time for, I think, one more question, maybe. Uh, I would like to not, it's not a question, but an observation. Uh, I feel that when uh, Roberto said that, you know, he questioned so many artists and everybody's creating. And uh, I think that is one of the very, very uh, beautiful aspect of the way an artist lives and survives. And not only artist, but in a way, um, the families, the extent, the, the connect that one artist has with his or her personal community, that also survives with the artist. Because uh, in my experience, even uh, talking to my children, their friends, the anxiety, the level of uncertainty, the level of feeling stuck, and how suddenly the whole role of uplifting their morale, uplifting, keeping them safe, has also come up to uh, my cap capability and capacity as an artist to create newer ways to you know, keep them sane and safe emotionally, uh, mentally, uh, in spirit, that it is time to tide over, it is time to get strength to tide over these times when both life and death have changed meaning, love has changed meaning, touch has changed meaning. So um, it's very beautiful to feel and hear that yes, as artists, it is the time to one, meet ourselves and then not only to, uh, not only to extend ourselves to the larger society, we are not able to, as we used to, uh, perform for the masses, for the uh, larger audiences, but also the community we are in touch with, we have to just take them along, at least in the present vicinity that we have. Oh, Jesus, just introduce the, who is the speaker. I think Dimple, one minute. Uh, because Dimple Kaur, she is a dancer, uh, classical dancer, performer, yeah. and I am a little bit opportunity to work with her. And now she is, where are you now? I'm in California. I am in okay. Uh, Irvine. Yeah. Okay. So I just sent the link that, okay, if possible, if you have make time, so you can join. So what I say before that, for me, is this is theater now. And... Uh, be courage and everything I think will be okay and we are the artists we are more courageable than so this is yes. the spirit I think for this Jesus we are looking for this spirit we all together and hope we meet in a real wait sometimes thank you thank you thank you for uh, sending me the link and inviting me here thank you it was thank really so insightful Thank you, Supriya. I, I share with you, uh, Dimple, I also follow you, actually, for your work, and what you put online, and the dances online, so to oh. see you here, it's like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I see oh. your work, and now I see the person. So this is okay. really amazing. Thank well, let's you. allow Roberto to answer. Roberto, uh, our live chat is uh, is moving a lot. I don't know if you can, but there is another question addressed to you, is uh, from Su Young. Uh, and my question for Roberto, as he's talking to all artists around the world, what type of methods and practices artists are doing to cope with this situation professionally, commercially? So I don't know if you, I mean, you can, of course, answer the info, but I don't know if you can also refer a few words about that, what kind of practices the artists are doing to cope professionally and commercially that you have seen through your interviews. 
Well, I have uh, interviewed uh, performers, um, journalists also, uh, and um, photographers, um, visual artists, and um, um, and of course dancers, and they are part of the performers. And uh, what uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but it seems to me that what uh, excited the artists, at least the ones that I talked with, is the op opportunity to have some time to perfect a skill that they did, that they needed to work on, but they could not because, well, they were going from gig to gig, from uh, work to work. So that's what, um, um, from their voices, from their excitement, it was the, the, uh, the possibility really to work on their voice, the possibility to finally work on their writing or working on some aspect of uh, their physical performance. Um, so really perfecting or uh, engaging with a skill that they didn't feel so good about so I bet that uh, once uh, we are all able to go back and share our craft, we will see the quality not going down, the quality is gonna go up. Can I quickly uh, show you something? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I um, also tapped into another skill I'm Maureen Dempsey, producer, director, acting coach. I worked in Los Angeles and in Ohio. And uh, one thing that I did with some of my artist friends, we have actually, we saw a um, news report on all the clothing that was piling up from people dumping their clothes, going through their closets in this time. So we took shirts that we were going to donate and we made masks from... Oh. This was an Abercrombie shirt. We even incorporated the little pocket because <laughs> it was so cute. So this was a skirt, um, but we repurposed clothing to make our masks so that it wouldn't add to the big dump of clothing. So I found as I was talking to my actors and I, I'm a little bit unique here in that I work with not only theater actors, but also film actors. And so I'm finding that my actors um, are coming together. This is interesting because whereas before I worked with two different groups, now they are blending because their skills have to meet because many of my um, stage actors have to learn the skills of my film actors. So they are all blending. And we've created a group online and we're going to start our Zoom meetings where my film actors are teaching my stage actors a lot of on-camera skills. The one thing I have found, which many of you have mentioned, is that the thing that they all have in common is their need for connection. No matter what happens, they are um, truly empaths. They really have that um, need to feel another being. And this just doesn't give them that personal feeling. Um, even my film actors talk about it um, because this computer puts distance between another being. And even when they were filming, they had a crew there and they could feel the crew responding to their performance. And they all talk about that lack of connection. So whether it is a um, stage actor or a film actor, they all lack the connection. And, um, but they are all fascinated by this change in times. And so I'm very fascinated by what Roberto is talking about, what many of you are talking about with, um, you know, what's happening now. 
and where we are going and uh, our place in this change. So thank you so much for this meeting and allowing me to participate. Marini, absolutely a pleasure. And it's wonderful what you're doing. I think that this is a, uh, you gave us the chance to have a beautiful way to wrap up this session because we were talking about connection. We were talking about problem, so problem solving and you come up with the mask in, in the most creative way. So uh, I know Robert is already asking how he can get one. And so, <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, guys, it's, uh, I would like, I, I wish that this can go longer. I, I am here looking at you guys and listening to your stories and using your insights. And I'm thinking, I feel very blessed about it. And I'm feeling like, well, we don't, maybe we meet in a month. And let's see, remember, life is changing so fast that maybe we can organize one of the meetings in a month or something just to see. Remember a month ago when we were talking about this? Now this is what has happened since we touched base. I think it's important to continue fostering this kind of, and encourage this kind of connection. My highest appreciation and respect to, to Gosha, to Roberto, Charlie, to Suprio uh, for participating, for, for being uh, so transparent, generous, and to go in there. So I really appreciate it very much. If anybody else have any final thoughts, I think that we can wrap up our session. Okay. Uh, yes, Supreme. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, you again, Jesus. And thank you all the participants who come here and share their time with us because we are not like the or for me i am not like that person to say this is you do or this is you uh, don't do but uh it's like i am going through this situation with my theater and um, it's my pleasure to share my view with you so maybe tomorrow i don't know the same thing if <laughs> I say it will be changed. So not take it in this way that, okay, you say this, 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 this. Because in every day, this situation I am going through is like you. So uh, thank you again, Gosiak. Uh, you, first of all, you don't know where you are coming. And Jesus and all those friends, Charlie's and Roberto, we are meet here. Maybe this relationship or this friendship will continue in future. Okay, thank you again. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you.